What is up, Facebook Live on a Tuesday from Ruin to Redemption, Virginia, knocking off Texas Tech in last night's national championship game. My question today on Berg is the word. Did you stay up to watch last night's national championship game between the two schools? So that's what I want to know, and that's the basis of today's discussion. Just want to break down last night's game a little bit for you, of which I watched absolutely zero, nothing. A 9.20 Eastern time start. I don't know what the TV executives are thinking, but this is absolutely ridiculous, and it's ruining a potential generation of college basketball fans, especially those that are on Eastern time like I am. I'm based in the Tampa Bay, Florida area. I work at 3 a.m. Granted, I go into work earlier than most people, but... A 9.20 Eastern time start. Last night's game went into overtime. It's the first overtime game in a national title game since Kansas and Memphis went into overtime. I believe that was in 2008. I cannot believe how late the start time was. And to me, it's just absolutely ridiculous. 9.20. This game did not get over because it went into overtime. I think it was about a quarter to midnight to where I was seeing graphics posted on Twitter when I got up this morning, seeing what time this game ended. I feel bad because I missed an absolute thriller. I've looked at the highlights. I've read about it this morning. But 920, why are we pandering and catering to the West Coast when we have Virginia, which is on the East Coast in Eastern time, Charlotte's, uh, I think it's Charlottesville, Virginia, which is where the University of Virginia is based, and Texas Tech in Lubbock, Texas. Do you think there's anyone on the West Coast, anyone out in Los Angeles, anyone out in California, the state of Washington, Nevada, what have you, that gives a crap about Texas Tech athletics, let alone Texas Tech basketball? I'm not even certain before this tournament that Texas Tech fans cared about their team all that much, given the state of Texas affinity for football. So that just goes to show you how stupid it was to have this game at 9.20. I'll be curious to see what the TV ratings come back as. But a 9.20 start, could we have not started this game at 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock Eastern time or 8.30, 8.30 at the latest because then people on the West Coast, they're getting home at 5.30. Tell your boss, hey, I'm either going to come in early or I'm going to leave work early today to watch the national championship game. If you're a sports fan and if you're that interested, a three-hour time difference out on the West Coast if you have an 8.30 p.m. Eastern time start, 5.30 on the West Coast time. You cater to both parties and you make it more manageable for the people on the East Coast, especially because, again, who on the West Coast is watching Virginia and Texas Tech? I don't know. If that person exists, I'd love to see the demographic of a huge Texas Tech Red Raiders fan or a Virginia Cavaliers fan out on the West Coast. But again, I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that they had this this late. Key stat in last night's game, Virginia went 12 for 12 in overtime from the foul line. I thought that was a huge distinction. Helped secure a victory once the game went into overtime. And certainly it was a thriller, but again, a, an entire generation of college basketball fans is not going to be able to watch now because of these late start times. It's also worth pointing out as well, there were no NBA games last night. The national championship game did not have to compete with the NBA last night during the broadcast, so that was not of a concern. The women's tournament wrapped up on Sunday, so really other than baseball and then regular programming on other networks, the national title didn't really have a whole lot to go up against. I'd also be a proponent of, say, hey, if you still want to have that late start in prime time, why not have this game on a Saturday instead of Monday night? I'd be curious to see if you were like me and watched some of the Final Four games Saturday but didn't watch the national championship game Monday. Please go ahead and vote in this poll while it's up. Or if you're seeing this after the fact, please feel free to leave a comment to see you know, if you stayed up and watched. If any of you did watch, what I would want to know as well is did you stay up to see one shining moment? Again, because this game went into overtime, it wrapped up about a quarter to midnight uh, on the Eastern time zone, which is just so late. And again, you don't have an NBA game to compete with. 
college basketball, they should have figured out something out. But you figured the network executives are going to try to milk every dollar that they can get by putting this game in prime time. I thought it was interesting, too. Virginia in their last three games in the Elite Eight against Purdue in the Final Four against Auburn. And then in last night's title game against Texas Tech, they they were trailing with less than a minute left in each of those games. So certainly a lot of luck. But this Virginia team, how they'll be remembered is this. You're coming off of 388 days from when Virginia lost to UMBC as a number one seed to a 16 seed. Why does this matter? After this year's tournament, one seeds are one excuse me, the 16 seed record against one seeds is one in 139. So after last year's embarrassment to UMBC, Virginia losing as the number one overall seed, they get redemption and win this year's title. Also worth pointing out, against Gardner-Webb in the first round of this year's tournament, at one point, Virginia was trailing in that game by 14 points And in that first round game, they were down at halftime by six points and they still went on to win the tournament. So hats off and kudos to the Virginia Cavaliers, their first national title. And they are the fourth team that lost in the first round of the tournament or what used to be known as the round of 64. They are the fourth team to lose in the first round of the tournament and then to go on and win the tournament the next year. So again, hats off to Virginia for what they were able to do. Certainly remarkable. And again, a team that was very, very good, but also had its its share of luck throughout this tournament as well. Again, in their last three games, in the Virginia Cavaliers' last three games, they were trailing in the last minute of each of their last three games in regulation. So pretty remarkable stuff there. But again, I before I wrap up, I just want to point out this. These 920 games starts, again, I couldn't watch because I have to go to work at 3 a.m. in the morning. That's when I work. But even if I was working a regular 8 to 5 or 9 to 5 job, you're talking about a game that wraps up around midnight, and then you have to get up and go to work and do whatever it is that you do after watching what was certainly a thrilling game, but is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to start out your week with this amount of lack of sleep? And and, and to me, it's just an easy solution. Either move the game to a different date or move up the start time. Not seeing really any comments uh, or any interaction with the poll, but if you are enjoying this, please feel free to share it with your friends on your feeds as well. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. This is another edition of Burgers. The Word. My name is Mark Bergen. Try to do this regularly, but again... I just I cannot believe how late this game went. Certainly a thriller that went into overtime again. The first time a game went into overtime since Kansas and Memphis, uh, back when Mario Chalmers hit that famous shot over Derrick Rose. The first time a national title game has gone into overtime since that game. But certainly remarkable stuff there. Again, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here again. Thank you so much for joining. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time, and enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, everyone.